What is going on? It is Elixir here, and I am back uh, from the last video we did on this topic, and I'm going to be bringing you a comparison between the Black Widow uh, Ultimate 2016 Edition and the Black Widow uh, Chroma. Uh, it's going to be just mostly theory for that, just basically explaining the differences between the two keyboards, and also the difference between the green and orange switch, because I received a bunch of questions about that in the comments of the last video. Also, after that, we're going to go into some lighting theory, so basically how you can set up your keyboard to have some cool layered lighting effects, because uh, that was also another really popular topic. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Just for the whole video, we're going to go via camera just to work on camera skills and also because it's easier for editing. So, basically the main difference between the Ultimate is the, besides obviously the color uh, with Chroma, is also the lack of macro keys. You can see here on the screen and on my keyboard itself, there are no side macro keys that are visible on the Black Widow Chroma, for example. So as you can see, there's that additional row there that has the uh, macro keys, there's five of them. There is actually a way to set up macros on the Ultimate and the Chroma, but this is just a dedicated macro row that you can set up if you are opting to go for the Black Widow Chroma. Also, the difference, one thing a lot of people noticed is I have a short left shift key. That is just a UK keyboard thing. Even when you switch to UK layout like I have here, it doesn't change the graphic to show the UK layout, so that's why the uh, keyboards on both of these screens have the extended shift key or at least normal US shift key. So in terms of actual hardware besides the macro keys, you're actually just looking at the colors, obviously. So the Chroma has the full Chroma range, whereas you can get just the uh, G in RGB for the Black Widow Ultimate. So right now we're just showing off the Ultimate, we're just showing off its starlight function where it just randomly lights up one key. You've got ripple, where when you touch it will ripple out from where you hit. You've got breathe, where it just fades in and out, just starts breathing. Static, which is actually just a solid glow, where it will just stay glowing. You've got reactive, which is similar to ripple, but when you hit a key, it, or when I'm hovering over it, you can see, it stays lit up. And basically, as I'm swiping over this, this is the equivalent of me uh, pressing down on the key. And basically, it stays lit for a couple, well, like a full second and then goes out. And then you've got wave, where it just waves over. An interesting thing to note is when something is downloading, especially from Razer, the keyboard will actually automatically go into wave uh, until the download is complete, which is just a pretty cool touch. You can also change the direction of uh, the wave to whichever one you'd like. A lot of people really did want to know was what is the difference between the two Razer switches? I got the green switch, which is Razer's standard green switch, and then there's also the other option, which is the orange switch. It's not actually on this page. But, uh, alright, so if we go into Razer mechanical switches, you can actually take a look for yourself at the difference of them, but the main thing is the orange switch is the stealth switch, so it's quieter, it's similar to Cherry MX Red and Black when it comes to how the keys function when it comes to noise. It's actually a design change in the actual uh, switch itself, I think we can actually compare the two here. So if you look mostly at around this area where you can see there is a hook on the green switch, once you switch to orange it is a linear stroke so it shouldn't uh, be catching on the way up so it doesn't make the sound. Yeah, that's the main difference between them. Really what this means for you is that if you are in a room that has a lot of people, uh, you can hear a lot of the clicks. You can sometimes hear it even when I'm using a noise cancelling mic. The actual clicks on these things are quite loud. so. It can be an annoyance to other people in the room if you are sharing a room with other people. For example, I'm in a study, which is sharing it with other people. Uh, I have heard comments that it is kind of loud, and obviously if you're typing at night, it is definitely something that people would notice in the dead of night. 
So that is one of the things that the orange switch does have over the green switch. It does give you the ability to type without fear of annoying everyone else in the room. Also, if you are recording, even though it is noise cancelling, these clicks will still come through when I'm recording on Audacity or Ava or things like that. It will. It's loud enough that if you are typing or moving the keyboard whilst talking, it will definitely get picked up. And sometimes we'll even activate the noise cancellation. Well, it will sometimes just start showing your voice even if you're not talking because the clicks are just that loud. Uh, so if you are mostly going to be recording, or if you're going to be sharing a room with a lot of people, I would actually recommend the orange switch over the green switch. It's something that I didn't take into account because I wasn't really educated on the matter. But the green clicks do sound awesome. It's just whether that sound is a hindrance to you and the people around you or not. The main thing to watch out for for when you have either green switch or orange switch and both of them are available on both the chroma and the ultimate on the 2014 and 2016 editions in 2016 the difference between that and the 14 is just that it does have the chroma lighting effects it's effectively a chroma keyboard where you only have access to razor green rather than the full color spectrum and for me that's really the main difference uh since i'm not someone who actually uses macro keys at all. I could set them up myself if I wanted to, but there was no reason to shell out extra for a dedicated macro row uh, on the left side because I wasn't ever going to use it. So I felt that there was no reason to get it and I was actually quite content with getting a more concise keyboard, especially since I'm switching from a laptop. Um, if you are someone who would make more use of the macros then it might be something worth looking into uh, simply because the dedicated macros are obviously much easier to use than having a function macro or setting up any other macro like that um, and also if green just isn't your thing or if you actually would prefer to get a greater range of colors then the chroma obviously has that greater range so you can actually do more with your color theory and things like that Speaking of which, we will now move on to probably one of the most requested things after why is my shift key so small, which is Lighting Theory 101. Lighting Theory 101 is just like a quick little thing. This will work for both Chroma and for the Black Widow Ultimate. I'm just going to be showing for the Ultimate in terms of colors, but the same sort of thing will work for if you're going for different colors, and I'll go into a couple of theory-based things on that, since I did art, I'm very familiar with what works well with colors and things like that, but obviously everyone has their own tastes, and that'll be for you to set up. This will basically just be mostly about shades and things like that, how you can get your most prominent colors to show through properly. Uh, so yeah, let's get it started. Okay, to get your lighting all set up, you do, need, you do need to install Razer Synapse, which is your... Uh, basically, it's the lighting software that you use for pretty much every Razer piece of equipment. And it also gives you the option to use Razer Surround Sound Pro, which you should all get whilst it's free. Uh, if you have a Razer piece of equipment that you can register on Razer Synapse, it's also where you register the warranty on the devices. <laughs> So if you're going to be setting up your own profile, you can go into Customize Lighting, which is, we'll add a profile, test, and you'll set up the shortcut to it. Usually it is functions, yep, functions for this, so this will be FN2 for me, and we can customize it to have its own lighting. So this is the standard lighting uh, selection that you have, where you can select breathing, reactive, ripple, all the ones that I showed off earlier, and you can also select the brightness. By default, it usually goes to the highest, uh, not, well not dimness, but just like the brightest color, the most vibrant color, and also the brightest uh, lighting setting. If you are looking to set up your own lighting effects, then this is where we go into Effects Configurator. 
When you have Effects Configurator, that is where you can actually start setting up all of the different effects. I'm just going to click through all of these. These will pop up when you go onto it, so if you do want to read those in greater detail, you can go through that. So, you actually do get some templates which uh, you can use to light up specific areas of the keyboard. One common one is WASD, where it will turn off everything except um, the WASD keys. So if you select all, and then you can actually switch it to uh, your base layer. Your base layer should really be one of the ones that isn't like reactive, it's the sort of thing where it's like wave, static, breathing, the things that are constantly moving but aren't massively interfering with anything. So for example, static would be a constant glow, which for Black Widow Ultimate I wouldn't recommend simply because you are stuck with just green, so it is advisable to pick something that occasionally does turn off. So that would be looking at either wave or breathing. I personally use breathing on my main one, but just for the sake of making it look different, we'll go for wave. And then you have your wave patterns. So the wave patterns, it's one of these two. Uh, like I said, this is Black Widow Ultimate predominantly. With these two, it just picks the type of wave that you get. And then, sorry about the sniffing, I'm kind of on the ill side. Then since this is your base layer, you don't want it to be moving too fast to be too distracting, so you're really aiming to put it over to slow, and then you just uh, up the speed a little bit or lower the speed depending on how fast you want your keyboard to be working. So if we just hit apply, then you can see at 10 keys a second, this is uh, what wave looks like. Alright, switching back to the laptop. For the actual colour, of the wave, you are going to be looking to make it a very dim color, generally just because oops, generally just because um, this is going to be your base layer, and if you're working in only green like I am, then your brightest green needs to be your best, well your brightest green. I just stopped paying attention, I don't think that actually made sense. <laughs> the brightest green needs to be your main green. So if we head over here and then drop this to the lower dimnesses, then hit apply, you can see that it's not as vibrant a green, or at least hopefully. It's also now at medium speed just because I cleared the effects. We'll drop it back down to 10, hit apply again, and it's slowed down. Now here's where it's going to be uh, available for you to hit your plus symbol in the bottom left and that's where you can add in what your main keystroke is going to be. Again, if you are looking to do different lighting effects to look cool, try and avoid static where possible if you're on a um, ultimate and if you're on a chroma then try and designate it to like one part of the keyboard. So I had ripple on my main one, so I'm just going to go for reactive for this one just to make it noticeably different. And then reactive, full brightness, and we'll have it on medium. So when we hit apply, it all looks the same, but then when I tap the spacebar, for example, it stays lit up. And you can see from there they are reactive whilst not interrupting the wave. And you can also see that there is a difference in brightness when it comes to the two of them. The reactive is the brighter of the two keyboard settings. So that's basically the sort of theory that you're going to be using if you are going for the Black Widow Ultimate. Simply because the Ultimate, again, only has green, so you want your brightest colours to be your reactive, your ripple, things like that. And then you have breathing or wave as your lower settings, just to make sure that when you're not typing, your keyboard isn't completely dead. <laughs> Then, if you are looking to set up a second profile, uh, we can actually just uh, quit out of this. Uh, well, if you're looking to create a copy, for example, if you're using this on multiple settings, for the Chroma people, if you're setting this multiple settings, you can create a copy of it and then you'll be able to change your colors. For us ultimates, we don't need it. And then we will make a second test one. Okay, I am back. Uh, I did have a couple of software issues, it just crashed on me. 
Okay, so I've reset it up, just made a couple of changes to it to make it more similar to what I have on my main profile, which I'm more familiar with. We've got our breathing layer, which affects every key. Um, and it is on a low brightness, it's on this one. And then you can see it breathes. And then we have a static as our top layer, which if you use the F, uh, FPS preset, you can set it to MMO mobile RTS, we've got it set to FPS. So it lights up your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, your reload and WASD. And we've got breathing applies to that as well, but we've also got a static on the highest brightness. So now when the keyboard is dead, you've got WASD R12345 glowing on the uh, highest brightness. And then we also got a low breathing effect just so the keyboard isn't looking too dead. You know, because breathing shows life, as we all know. Then we've got ripple effect. So when any key is hit, it will also ripple out. We've got it set to a quick ripple. I'll just wait for the keyboard to die so you can better see it. It's on a middle brightness, and it's just a quick little uh, pulse. You can slow it down, or you can speed it up. And then, as you can see... Oop, just missed the cue. The ripple at the moment, let's see if we drag it above. And then hit apply again. There we are. So that's the one thing that you do need to look out for, is the effect layers and what's on what. It is actually quite important that you get them the right way. So before we had static, where static was on top of ripple, so ripple actually wouldn't play out when it was hit on the WASD keys. But if you move ripple, which currently affects every single key, on top of static, that means when you press it, it will play the ripple effect out, and then after that is done, it will immediately go back to static. So that way, when you are playing, you do get your full ripple on any key, and you still manage to get your priority keys lit up. What this means for the chroma is what you can actually do is set up a specific color for your priority keys. So for example, while we have our bright greens, you can set them up to a red, a blue, and things like that. And then have a more mellow color underneath. Generally, it's better to have a striking color as your priority color. So something that's bright, something like a red, or a light blue, or things like that. That will definitely catch your eye if you are looking to quickly reorientate yourself when it comes to checking your finger position on the keyboard. And then if you have a lower uh, lower brightness on a slightly more mellow color, maybe like a deep blue, for example, uh, you can then just, you know, keep your keyboard looking pretty because why have an RGB keyboard if it's never going to be on? And then with some games like Overwatch, you can actually get uh, specific game presets, uh, which we will go into at another time perhaps when Overwatch comes out, for example. Um, but you can actually link games to specific profiles, and if those games are supporting the Chroma Workshop, then they will put their own additional programs onto it. I don't have any games that currently support it, so I can't show you unfortunately, but that'll be something to definitely uh, take a look for online. But yeah, so that's basically what it is. This is an FPS, uh, well, FPS uh, third person shooter sort of thing where you can actually see what keys to light up. But then things for like MMO, MOBA, things like that, you can get presets for those that specifically affect the number keys. And that's really lighting theory in a nutshell. If you do have any other questions, then be sure to hit me up in the comments and I'll be getting back to you as soon as possible. If you did like this video, then. Uh, Give it a thumbs up, it helps me know what I'm doing well, and obviously if there are any criticisms or just well done, definitely let me know in the comments so I can improve on them for the next video. Thanks everyone for watching, sorry for all the sniffling, and have a happy new year. Some people are asking whether I was wearing gunners. Uh, no I'm not. For those of you probably, my normal audience, are more familiar, the uh, KNT is sponsored by NoScope Gaming Glasses, which are very similar to... Gunners, in terms of design, or at least these ones are, you can actually get uh, different types. You can get ones that look closer to normal glasses, ones to go over prescription glasses. So if you are a glasses user, like myself, you don't have to limit yourself on only using these for like a computer 3DS if you're short-sighted, or for the TV if you are long-sighted. You can actually get ones that go straight over your prescription glasses. I'm actually going to be receiving a pair soon. They've finally reached the UK. And I'll probably do a review on those if you guys want to learn more about 
the sponsors what they do, and in the meantime, I'll have a link in the description to go check out the site. Alright, this is me for real, these guys. Peace.